for 1.5k and i love the fact that you know kind of talking with these teams trying to do a little bit of prep and also hearing from the players tempos he says after every win they get to feel more and more confident more and more comfortable playing together mm -hmm. exactly what we're looking for we're gonna have to see which team brings the best things to the tables in this one because smacks guess what i want that cash prize pool if i'm that <laughs> Yeah, talk about confidence getting larger up. as the tournament goes on. Not Academy started off with a 2-1, and then they're the only team to get a 2-0 victory in those first series. Oh, look, there I am. Hey, guys. Back. Uh, Cubby will be here shortly, I, I assume. Right now, I needed a very long water out. break. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I saw something. Ah, Ooh. hey. Hey, bud. Welcome. Yeah, good to see you again. Welcome to the draft. Uh, and yeah. We're, we're already off to the races. We got Pantheon, we got Galio, Akali, all taken off the board. And yeah, we, we were talking a bit about this Akali uh, coming into this draft and how not Academy team, I believe are the only team to actually get their hands on that champion and didn't actually work out too well for Tuesday in that lane, but that was because the Lulu really stuffed the lights out of him in that lane. It did win. We'll, we'll give it that. But here's see a couple of the red side mans we've been seeing. Olaf being taken off the table. Mm -hmm. uh, something we're seeing a lot on red side because it shuts down quite a few of the stronger junglers that we have in the meta right now. Lilia, Hecarim still around. Uh, red side has been banning Olaf quite a bit because if you first pick that Olaf, the takes those two answers away, right? Two champions that yep. are very strong in the meta. So curious to see those bans coming down from the side of C9. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. a lot of focus being put down on Captain Shrimps' pool as Akali and Rumble both taken off the table. And we're going to have to see what they round that ban out with. Going to be the Aatrox. Oh. Captain Shrimps, known for playing a lot of these melee AP bruiser type champions. Sometimes the Assassins the coming in for the mid lane. And uh, on that blue side, he doesn't always get counterpick. But as you said, Cubby, the Graves is coming in. Does leave way to some of these AP junglers that we've been seeing. Not that much today, but in the meta, as you already mentioned, the Lilia. The Nidalee was picked at one point today as mm -hmm. well. Uh, and perhaps this Gragas is going into that role too. I do like the Gragas flex. It's a good matchup into the Graves, but I think Graves is something that's worth talking about here for both teams because mm -hmm. uh, we saw not Academy team play on stream. Game one, Winston was dominant on the Graves, really helping get Dokla ahead. XU was, I, in my opinion, the standout performer here that we had for uh, Cloud9 Amateur as his tempo and gameplay, I mean, almost saved what was a disaster start in game one, managed to have a big role in the wins in game two and three, which got him to the finals. That first pick does not surprise me. What has surprised me, though, is this very high priority on the Braum. Uh, Leona is still a champion that exists. I know it's yeah. not as flexible, but if you're going to pick a support that's not flexible, I, I guess they're just trying to deny that Lucian and Braum combo. It does pair okay with the Graves and can shut down a Gragas barrel, but I've been really surprised at the lack of Leona play we've seen today. Well, Cubby, we've also seen a lack of Senna play up until this point. That champion now getting locked in for this bot lane. And yeah, this is sort of a side of the bot lane meta that we haven't seen a lot of today. You already mentioned the Leona just having all of that crowd control engage on lock for that champion. Senna is quite the opposite. She just wants to sit back and be the support for her team from that AD carry role. And mm -hmm. with that coming in alongside the Braum, I'm expecting to see maybe some more of those melee AP champions come through from Captain Trims and Speedo taking more of a front seat for the damage dealing champions on the side of Cloud9. As we start to round out this pick band, it looks like we're going to see a couple Lucian counters being taken away. Mm -hmm. Syndra off the table. Uh, Renekton as well, something that uh, Speedo can take up into the top lane and it shows that not academy team may be looking to where uh you know slow down some of that early game aggression that could come out from the side of uh cloud nine amateur the interesting part is that not academy team they still hold the double flex as we go into this draft right. gragas can be top or support we've seen doko play it on stream he also played it off stream uh when they got here and lucian uh we've seen them flex that around as well Curious to see if they end up going for something different. Jin's still on the table. Brahm is a very good pick into it, but uh, has been a go-to A to carry in this meta uh, for quite a few of the players that we have in this tournament. Ooh. They're switching between a couple of those ones that are more comfortable for the blind. It looks like it very well could be that Jin, and it is for Apollo that you mentioned, Cubby. And like you said as well, this Gragas still could be in that bot lane, could be going top lane to respond to potential Malphite for Cloud9, that gets, that gets locked in. They're going for some big ball team fights with that pick being blinded for them. That's yeah, that blue side comp coming out, right? You gotta play a little bit safer 
uh, have a little bit of a safe draft because Red Side does get final answer with the counter pick and hovering two tanks here. You know, it, yeah. it is one way to beat up Jin, right? Okay. Just lock in some tanks and see if you can take it. That's three yeah. tanks now, but Cywis is on the table. He is so good in the Malphite, so good into Orn. This should be insta locked by the side of not Academy team. This pick's way too good to pass up this draft. Yeah, Cubby, remember how I said that I was hoping to see Speedo and Captain Shrimps play damage dealers with the Braum and Senna pairing? Uh, that didn't happen. A they lot of are more utility. This is exclusively XU, which is good news for you because you were highlighting him as being the saving grace for this Cloud9 amateur team in their last series that we just watched on the stream. So if that is actually true and he can put on the carry pants with the four backup members, and he's got his work cut out for him. He might be able to do this, but this is really good in this draft, Kobe. Yeah, this this Silas is like an Alistar away from just being like the Silas dream coming on through. Yeah. You get a Malphite ult, you get an Orn ult. He also does very well against both champions in lane. And Captain Shrimps, I mean, this is the style this player loves to have, right? He is not playing to win lane. He's playing to help out his jungler, make sure that XU is going to have the best time possible in the early game. That Malphite... Real signal of it is Dokla and Tuesday keep on swapping around those picks. It does look like Lucian's going top. I have to say, I like this a little bit more. It's sometimes uh, you can punish the Silas early in that top side with a long lane. I think putting a range champion up there with the dash going to provide a little bit of extra safety here for not Academy team. And this flexibility is something that we expect for a team that's rocking four players that have played on the LCS stage. You, of course, got to remember that with this Lucian going to any lane, it does not provide the best gank setup for this Lilia. But We've seen that Zazel on this support role has been the guy to roam around the map the most, which, of course, we're expecting coming out. He was in LCS yeah. just a few months ago, Cubby. So, of course, he's going to have those roaming chops built in. He's going to be that shot caller for his team in those plays. But we're going to have to see if he can find some more of those in this Grand Finals. We're already on the rift for game number one, Cubby. It's going to be a blast. I like the fact you're touching on Zazel. I think it's important to touch on this player as th this roster that we have for not Academy team. It's it's a big surprise for all of us or in eye popper that we have uh, coming out here in amateur, right? Uh, all these players have looked good at times in Academy, but Zazel, I mean, season eight, they finished top four at Worlds. And if there's yeah. any big surprise coming out from these two rosters, for me, it's Zazel. Uh, the fact that he finds himself back in amateur for some reason, his stock has dropped very low, uh, finds himself on this team, and I'm really curious to see what Zazel looks like in Amateur because something that we always harp on Smacks is the support pool uh, that we have down here in NA, very weak. And Zazel yeah. comes in as a very strong player and shot caller that we have from the LCS, and we've already seen him put a little bit of you know, his prints on the map early in some of these games, but I definitely want to focus on him throughout the game and see if he does get these roams down uh, because it's a player that we have high expectations for Ooh. given the fact that he does come in with some pedigree and also uh, comes in in a very weak role as... Hold on. Level 1 in bay. Yeah. Early action coming around, but we have Speedo coming from the side Ooh. smash. Yeah, watch Speedo's position here. He's on this Orn. He does start with the E. It's a That's double a knockup onto Winston and Dokla. Winston very quick on this Lilia, but he oh, still no. has to flash. Now Speedo still has his own. Will be forced to use it. The blue buff goes over to XU. He's level two, pushing the members of Not Academy out of this jungle. They're just going to be walking away, but unfavorable trades across the board for Not Academy. The huge start for XU. He gets a camp lead. Winston may have to base earlier. He should be able to clear out three camps on the oh. Lilia. Might have to spite that one. He's trying to kite it out the best he can, but we talked about XU getting that early priority in the series that we saw on stream earlier. The fact that he gets a start like this uh, puts C9 Amateur in at least a pretty nice position to start things out, and we already have awkward lanes coming on through as Doko actually walks in the mid lane. Mm. All right. So looking at this, Cubby, when Graves is this far ahead in the early game, if he can maintain this, then I really like the outlook of that because every single lane of his has some pretty good gank setup. Yes, this is a Malphite, so it doesn't get the best until he is level 6. But once you do get level 6, you can be that atomic bomb just roaming around with this marksman jungler and just wreaking havoc everywhere across the board. We talked about it in the draft. There is a ton of utility in every single position to back up this Graves. So if he does get this far ahead, he does get his itemization off the ground very early, then we can start seeing that come through for XU. 
And it's an important start because these two tanky solo laners that were drafted by the side of Cloud9 are going to get blown out of the water early, right? Mm. And if Lilia gets pacing on the Graves, it could be a doomsday scenario early for Cloud9. Yeah. The fact that Graves does get off to this hot start, going to secure a crowd, can possibly invade the blue buff as well. You can see Tempos and Wixie making a nice play with priority, already helping out their jungler. If this doesn't happen, it can easily be a repeat of what we've seen earlier, which is the fact that not a academy team have a lot of experience playing around Dokla and topside with Winston and Dokla both coming fresh off of TSM. Uh, we've seen these guys just blow other top laners out of the water, and so the fact that the jungler is ahead early can help save some of those solo laners and save what we've seen early good play from a not academy team. Where we've seen them slip up, it's been more of the mid game. Yeah. We saw that level one go a bit differently for not Academy team. Perhaps if Winston got that blue buff stolen away from XQ, maybe we could be seeing that devastating combination of the previous TSM Academy, Dokla and Winston. But Winston instead has been triple buffed. He's forced to just pick mm -hmm. up the scraps from his own jungle. Like you said, it's thanks to that early lane priority from Wixie and Tempos. And the interview is starting to they're starting to put their money where their mouth is, Cubby. They're showing us that they do have this extra confidence. They do have this extra synergy that they've been working on all throughout the day, and it's been a long day so far. And I want to overreact. The Tempos did say if they win game one and get the download, it's pretty much GG from there. So, uh, you know, obviously that's going to be the case, right? Yeah, those, those are fighting words. They brought XU <laughs> down to make sure that they can back their claim up, but... Just going to be walking away from that one, or body slamming if you are the ginger alcoholic. Not too graceful coming out from, uh, from <laughs> Gragas there. No, I don't think that's what he's known for. Uh, what, what's his what's his champion title? It's like the Rabble Rouser or something. It's a pretty he likes good title. A bar fight, you know? Get right yeah, into the Bills Mafia. He is far from a ballerina, though, so if that's what you're looking for, then uh, don't think the Gragas is the pick for you. But right, I don't I, think I that's what Zazel's looking for. I've, I've won the day. Sorry, I wanted no. out your Colts. Uh, meanwhile, oh, man. Grave showing bot side does give Winston a chance to catch up, steal away a couple camps. It's a nice play going down on the Gromp as Winston is fighting for priority. Should be able to get the respawn Raptors and Krugs here, which actually puts Lily in a position that's not too bad in this early game, but Graves is still going to have the power to interact with lanes. But the issue is, Graves can't really interact with his lanes until level 6 comes on down. Mm. Yeah, level 6 is where things really start to come up big for C9. As we already talked about, the unstoppable force is there for the Malphite. Before then, he's just kind of just sitting in lanes, slapping some minions, having a jolly good time. Hoping to get all that he can against Tuesday. Hasn't quite worked out, but he has go. baited in a potential trade. They both have level 2. They both have oh. the ultimate flashed away. Tuesday whiffing that one. It's first blood for XU. I wouldn't call it a whiff. I call it a beautiful flash coming out from Captain Trips oh, yeah. as he guesses the unstoppable force coming through from the Silas. He takes that first kill in the mid lane as Tuesday a little over aggressive and smacks. I know that you said that Tuesday's laning so far wasn't necessarily bad, but it wasn't getting some of the weeds that we expected from these Ooh. players. Is he's going to have to flash out of that one? But uh, I know that you you, didn't, you weren't necessarily critical, but you were hoping for more out of Tuesday from what we've seen early. Yeah, of course you got to remember that not Academy team has yet to really play around Tuesday's lane, so you got to throw him that bone, but. He was really struggling in that first series that we saw on the day against Robbie Bob. And one of those games was Akali versus Lulu, which is not a very fun match if you've ever played that one as Akali. You can't do the same things that you could against other champions. But even still, Tuesday really struggling in that one. His positioning wasn't all that good outside of lane either. So potentially a weak spot on this team will die for first blood and... This is the champion that we were really highlighting in the draft too, Cubby, is Silas is that counter to these tanks that Cloud9 Amateur have picked up. Silas is the win condition for this one, right? Because mm -hmm. if Malphite and Orn, if they're allowed to get ahead a little bit and get those tank stats, it's going to be really difficult for the Jin to get through, right? Uh, it's going to be yeah. all on the Kraken Slayer Lucian and the Silas to really make this happen. And the fact that Tuesday does go down, he is up in CS uh, in a very good lane matchup uh, for the Silas, but... At least, I, I like the fact that CNI am sure they're, they're trying to put this Silas behind, because if he does get ahead and gets rolling, he does so much damage when he steals these big teamfight ultimates. Speaking of big damage teamfight ultimates, Cubby, I wasn't sure if he was going to do it, but Captain Shrimps does appear 
to be committing to the atomic bomb Malphite build. He's got an Amptome. <laughs> Tank Malphites do not build Amptome, let me tell you. true. So I'm very excited to see what explosions await us on the Rift today in this game, number one. He does have it. He can go for these plays. Tuesday will not have oh. access to it. I'll just watch him. Winston, does he have Smite? Okay, huh? okay, yeah. we're good. Thank you so much, you Observer got. Joe. Uh, showing us all the good stuff in this game as we have a dive now. That's Dash down from Lucian. And Flash as well. Dokla now culling Speedo to death. Oh no. It will it will work. Tuesday arrives, but he is what? knocked up by that unstoppable force. Huh? It's a trade of one for one, Cubby. Ooh! Okay, Dokla. Not quite gonna be taking as much damage as a late game Graves would have dealt, but one for one nonetheless. That was a really weird interaction for Silas. I think he flashed the Unstoppable Force and then E'd back in. I, I, I don't know exactly what happened, but uh, one for one, it is... You can see the Silas damage already coming through, stealing that Orn ult as XU keeps oh. on trying to pressure, but he might have bitten off a little bit more than he can chew. He got a Sleepy Graves. He does have a dash, but flash to follow from Winston. Can he outduel this? There's a Rift Herald in the way, so XU can't land his shots. One more Q would do it, but the smite to heal up. X oh. is dashing away. Ooh. He gets the outplay, Cubby. That's Holy a solo emo. kill for the Graves again. And we get to watch this replay, too. Okay, Axie's given Dokla the top lane treatment so far that uh, they were given other teams. You can see here the trade of ultimates. going to have some horn to horns going crisscross here. Tuesday, I, I want to see what happens with this Malphite ultimate. If he's able to flash it and E back in, it was a really weird interaction. Yeah, oh. that's... Okay, that, that's some interesting coding going on. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know what else to say about that. Dokla ends up having to get a step on away. But hey, I like the fact that we have Cloud9 trying to trade punch for punch early. The strength that we've seen from not Academy team so far. Uh, what was that? The Netflix intro screen? That looked pretty nice there. Uh, strength we've seen from not Academy team so far is the fact that their early game has been really clean. And the synergy that we have that pre-exists between Dokla and Winston has been strong. I like the fact, though, that we're seeing Axio and Speedo kind of give Lucian that treatment. You can dive him if you get ahead. It's exactly mm. what happened here. And no flash anymore for Dokla either. So if they want to do that again, he's even more vulnerable this time around. Not quite completing his mythic item yet. If it is going to be that Gale for us, he does get that extra dash for there. But like you said, Cubby, we're expecting the Kraken Slayer. He does need to deal a truckload of damage in this game because this Jin is going to be a more utility-oriented pick as he is against three tanks. Or two and a half, if, if you want to be real technical about it. Braum doesn't really get as tanky as the other two, but, you know, each their own. So, Smacks, if this is the Atomic Bomb Melfight build, uh, what's the Q? Uh, I, I, I feel Q... like the R has got to be the A-bomb. Yes, the, the ultimate is definitely the Atomic Bomb. Um, yeah. I think his Q is like a discus. I don't want to get hit by a discus. That would hurt. Like, usually, usually it's uh -oh. just like a frisbee. It's but like a, a discus counter. would definitely hurt. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Dokla does not have a dash, and that's an instant punish on the flash, like I mentioned earlier. They give that kill over to Malphite as Tuesday cannot interact with this lane. And I must say, these two tanky solo laners that were picked to counter the Jin, the fact that Lucian and Silas aren't blitzing this lane phase, I, I'd say much thanks to the play and pathing coming out from Axu. It's putting Not Academy team in big trouble. C9, they're up early in this one. And as these items come on through, it's going to be really difficult for them to get through these big tanks that C9 have stacked up in draft. Yeah, we, we keep calling Malphite a tank, even though he's building full AP, because in reality, he's still going to be tanky. He's still going to be so difficult to kill for annoying. these 80 carry champions. And yeah, annoying is one word for it. I was going to say downright obnoxious. He will just be stuck in your head forever. Uh, and he will be beating your head into the ground with his ultimate as it's going to deal an incredible amount of damage. I assume he's going for the Luden's Tempest also to get that Ooh. extra burst on lock as well. I'm going to guess Night Harvester. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, we'll I, see who's correct. We might have brand this before. As yeah. Goodbye. Yep. There it is. That's a preview of what's to come later also. Is Dokla dead again while his flash is down? There's the Rift Herald. Oh, Winston and Tuesday are attempting to make a Winston's return play. I don't oh, think he can wow. do this. Yeah. Oh, I don't think he can at all. That is a Sleepy Graves. Does get traded one for one, but here comes the Orn Horn. The teleport is there. Captain Shrimp still on this Malphite, still throwing those discus, and <laughs> can't speed shoot him down. Discus greater than chain is, is what I'm yep. seeing so far as two for one in the top lane. 
C9, looking good in this one. I, I've got to say, this is all XU, this early game. The fact that he's uh -huh. up two levels. He got ahead in that level one. He's kind of babysat his solo lanes here, especially making sure that this Lucian gets behind with his pathing. The fact that he's just going straight top and stopping this Lucian from rolling. If you stop Lucian from rolling, he's worth us for the rest of the game. And we get a repeat of the dive. Dokla, um, hey buddy, can you play League of Legends here? No? All right. <laughs> Uh, I guess pulling out. Nope. He's dead before he hits the ground. Oh, sorry. Actually, no. He Ooh. hits the ground for just a second and then gets killed. So that's that's my mistake. That's some misinformation. But here comes the Prancing Lilia, who is going for the Moonstone Renewer build and is down two oh, levels. Oh, your favorite. Um, see, my favorite is a strong word. Okay. I, 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 think, it's, I think it's cool. Do I think it's good? Hmm. Time I've been will calling tell. it. I've been calling it the Moonstone uh, Manure build because I'm not a fan, but I, I, I respect the effort coming on through. Yeah. For those of you listening at home, uh, Manure is actually uh, cow feces, which is why the joke is funny. Thought you know, you, Smax, uh, that's actually might, might step one of comedy. When you have to explain the joke, that's when it gets funnier. Uh, yeah. yeah. I know. Okay. That's, Thanks. I, that's... I appreciate the back there, buddy. Yeah. No problem okay. at all. I am that here anything slip through the cracks. to help you. Okay. That is Thank my you. job. You're welcome. Yeah, uh, by the way, you're right. Is here. Is, it's Luden's Tempest. I I owe you. Ah. I owe you. Smax is the true color caster. <laughs> All right, Cubby, tell me how this play is going to go then. Okay, we got the, the bowling ball going sideways with the rock, and the play's over. Back to you, Smax. All right, great. Great play by play right there. Ooh. This is why we've swapped, and uh, <laughs> I guess we're swapping back. Um. <laughs> Okay, well, Cubby, there's something I want to talk about just real quick uh, in the downtime, and that is that Zazel hasn't actually found too many roams in this game. Uh, part of that, I assume, is because he's not going for the mobility boots that we've seen on his Alistar throughout the day. He's instead going for the Ionian boots of Lucidity, recently buffed to 20 ability haste. I'm a big fan of that. You want to know the but... real reason? Oh, tell me. His, his jungler's getting gapped, man. That's why. <laughs> That Winston could be, that could be part of it. Yeah, XU has tempo on everything. All not uh, Academy team can do is just w sit back, scale, and try and get some items. Uh, maybe fighting on the one item spikes or waiting for Tuesday hit, to hit level 11 so that, you know, ultimate gets buffed on up with some more, or I guess less cooldowns. Uh, that's really what they're waiting for here, but it seems like they're going to wait to fight till the next dragon. I think they should wait to fight till another dragon coming on through because they do not have any chance to win right now. And it's a bit concerning that Winston is going for the support build, and he's this far behind. Is he still too up? Yes, he is. Two two levels down still in this jungle, and his his lanes aren't looking as good either. They're both a level down each, so the experience difference is quite large, which is not what I expected when coming into this game because the game experience is quite large going the other direction for not academy team. They, as you said, they have a top four performer at Worlds on their team. They have a bunch of LCS players on their team. And this is this is going up against the new blood, Cubby. Imagine being Zazel here. You're up against the, the new Cloud9, the newest Cloud9 support, and you got kicked off two years ago. Imagine being that. Fortunately for us, it is early in the season. Uh, obviously being an exhibition tournament, we are just watching to see how these teams warm up, but hey, 1.5k on the line. Like I said, that's a lot of Chipotle money coming on through. I, I, I personally <laughs> feel like that, that, that feels pretty good for these teams. I think they definitely want to take this one home, but you can see that with more games coming on through, more comfort, and I've been impressed so far with C9 Academy this game, and it, it feels like we're just waiting for that item spike to come on through. I'm thinking that possibly fourth dragon, we see a fight coming out, uh, from the side of not academy team but until then it just seems like they're gonna farm up try and play three lanes and that is one way that they can come back right lucian even though he is very far behind can still play in a side lane try and get some stuff done silas is a very good matchup into both solo laners this is how not academy team can slowly walk their way back into this one but it's gonna take a lot of time before they can, get, they can be competitive in a team fight yep toxicity aside toward not academy team they are still in a position where if they do scale, if they do achieve these slower paced team fights, that's when the Moonstone Renewer can really come online. That's when something like a Leandri's Torment can start to deal a ton of damage. So 
if they can achieve that as the game progresses and if they don't find themselves getting completely obliterated by things like the Ludens Malphite and the Gale Force Graves, then those team fights can still be theirs. So still looking out for that as getting to a little bit of a point where they are just farming out. And as we mentioned, that definitely favors not Academy team if they can just keep this pace. No, it's interesting seeing this in game one, Smacks, because, you know, doing my prep, I try to get in touch with some of the coaches and managers, talk about mm -hmm. how these teams kind of were put together. Ended up talking with Influx over uh, manager for not Academy team. And I asked, I was like, you know, the common perception that we have so far in this tournament uh, for Proving Grounds, the fact that your team's going to smash. Like, we yeah. feel like, or a lot of people and fans feel like because it is all this experience coming in from LCS, uh, these players are just straight up better and that they should be expected to win everything, right? And I was in, the answer I got was that it's not the case. Feels like it's an unfair assessment so far that uh, the experience really shines through as, mm -hmm. you know, how the map's going to be played, not necessarily with how individually talented all the players are. Uh, and that as the season goes on, that should start to shine on through. But it's the one thing that we really want to see with the changes to Proving Grounds this year. And that is, yeah. how does Amateur stack up to Academy, not Academy team? It's probably as close to an Academy team as you can get. And it's good to see some of the new players, the new talent coming on through, showing up good early. Let's see if that stays through a five-game series. But hey, we start off a good start. And they do have Academy team in their name. So uh, we're just going to ignore but the first not word Academy there. We're going to ignore the first word. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna say hey, this this is mm, academy we're, team. We are going to choose as casters to ignore information in front of our faces. Yep, for the betterment of the cast. Yes, I, I am fully with you on that okay. one. Okay, we. I think I'm with you on that one, but we're we're with each other, Cubby. We're holding hands on this narrative point. It's starting to turn it into an anime, man. Like friendship wins. Yeah, we're... <laughs> let's uh. Uh, let's, let's get away let's, from this. Let's put that, let's put that curtain uh, over us real quick. Um, <laughs> nobody can see that. Uh, <laughs> meanwhile, power Tuesday, Tuesday's attempting to go for this play. He uh -oh. does now have the Unstoppable Force. He's been knocked up himself. Oh. The Stasis Captain Shrimps Rips. again with the predictions. He can use his ultimate better than Silas. This is incredible, but the curtain call is here. Oh, OXU. He does get taken down in the end. Dokla forced to flash, but it is still that trade yet again. Seems like Cloud9 cannot find a clean kill trade. All right, first off, beautiful barrel coming in from Zazel, which created the, the, the trade kill coming on through. And this is a lot of gold and a shutdown coming on through. As we are going to see this play again. And man, Captain Shrimps, the, the rock, it does take a lot of mechanics, but he's making oh. the mechanics show with plays like this. That's the second unstoppable force of Silas. He's dodged out on. Looking pretty doing it in the gold as well. As then Zazel, watch this barrel come on through from Dragons. This is beautiful. He's oh, up man. Teams, allowing that last bolt to hit. That's what allows Dokla to clean this one up. Yeah, and then Speedo and XU dashing in separate directions to try to dodge the the curtain call shot. That's a little bit unfortunate, but it is still Dokla who's forced to flash to secure that kill. So it's not nothing that causes that kill to arrive. But I got to highlight that Apollo Price landing those shots, it's not easy to land those curtain call hits. So pretty yeah, impressive pretty stuff to, to lock that one down. Yes, I, I've done it. Uh, I, my ults do not ever look that nice, so... That's why we bring support snacks. Yeah. The, if Jin support ever becomes meta, we're in trouble. Please, dear God, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think the game of League's in trouble, if that becomes a thing. I mean, Ash has been a support in this preseason, so is Twitch, I don't want to talk, so... I don't want to talk about that god Straight... build coming on through. Stranger that, 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 things. Oh god, uh, we're gonna have to see if Tuesday goes aggressive here. He does have backup, possibly, coming out from Milia, and does have that Orn ultimate. The 1-3-1, this is the solution. You can see Dokla, he is starting to crash some waves into that bottom lane tower, which is golden XP lost for the side of C9. So if not, Academy Team can keep out stretching, or keep on stretching out the map, keep on picking up some extra CS in those side lanes. They can slowly crawl their way back into the game. Uh, really looking for C9 to try and break that trend. Keep on taking those monster objectives, but... Like I said, I, I don't think not. I think not. Academy team's just gonna decide not to fight, try and get some extra gold in their pocket. And still, they get the items where they feel like they can finally do something and smacks that might just be the next dragon that we have spawning in two minutes. Yeah, the EXP and gold game is certainly being swung in the other direction for not Academy teams solo laners. 
Winston's still struggling a bit, but he's fully committed to going for the utility build. He now has a Zonia's to try to stay alive longer. Cubby, do you know if you can still heal with Moonstone Renewed in oh, your... Oh, hold on. In your stasis? Hold on. Observer nah, Joe just caught the most important part of the game. <laughs> yeah, Ronald, he was going to run out. He was getting run. some good practice in. <laughs> Thank you, Observer Joe. But Cubby, do you know right. if... If you if you still heal people while in the stasis of Zonia yes. with Moonstone Renewer, you yes. do. Yeah. So that's that's you saying that you do know or that it yeah, does. Yeah, you you do I do know and you do heal people. Oh. Okay. Coach, that's the, the best answer. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I uh have not built those two items together yet. What if I was wrong? So I don't I don't have Twitch chat up, but <laughs> if, if I was wrong, I can only imagine what they'd be saying right now. I I, I I'm right, but Wait, good. wait! If you're if you're so right, then why are you concerned about being wrong? Because I no, I'm not concerned. I'm just saying it would be funny if I was, but I'm not. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, that's just a funny thought experiment. Cubby's actually never been wrong, but it's fun to it's fun to think about when that could possibly happen. Thank you, Spex. Um, this is. <laughs> I've never been wrong. You are correct. Yeah, yeah. That's uh. <laughs> that's a certifiable fact. The truth Give me of that life. Certificate. Yep, yep. Um, uh, Doka's a troll. Oh, see ya. Doka! Oh my gosh. He's dead. That was a lot of ults. Well, I don't Either think we're actually. gonna be seeing a dragon contest. No, I, I don't think so either. Doka's dead for 35 seconds. Has teleport in about double that time, so... It appears that C9 are just going to get this dragon completely for free, but they do not know that Zazel's there. Actually, now they do. Interesting that a few the, uh... A few of the criticisms that we had with Dokla is the fact that he likes to play side laners. Every once in a while, he kind of loses where the rest of the team is on the map, and we did see that there. Uh, still shining through in these amateur games. So something that Dokla can definitely work on. Gets caught out there. That said, another dragon going on over. That's soul points, Max, and some it Infernal is. Drakes. It does help the explosivity of the A-Bomb. Yes. The explosivity of everyone is very much benefited by that. I just care about the A-Bomb, man. Honestly, it will I be fun. On two I'm, people. I'm a little bit sad that he went for Zonia's instead of something like a Death Cap or an Ego Book, as you call it. Yeah, but I love the Ego Book, man. Uh, Ego Book is an oh, option. Oh, he's going Banshees he... too. Not sad. Uh, not necessarily. It's he could be getting a tank item potentially. Um. Oh wow, that that's quite the update. We got 39 stacks on Senna coming on through as producer Lorne hitting us up with that extended range coming on through. Nice zoom. That's a beautiful animation. Look at by this the way. Look at purple that. horse. Yeah. It's... Do, you get to, do you get to see her run out of the base with it? Does she? Have, oh, she has home guards. Oh, observer nice. makes it happen immediately. Look, oh, man, I love doing this stream. Look at this. Where do you get this? There we go. Oh yeah. Oh, look at the, oh, back the horse flip. is gone, but that's oh. still cool. Yeah, the back flip's cool. There she it's goes. A skin. It's a it's a pretty champ. Oh, oh Tuesday okay. turning it on him. Yep. All right. Oh. Oh. Oh my <laughs> God. Tuesday. That was absolutely incredible. Everyone's all of a sudden around this blue buff yeah. pit. Winston is on the Slea, is still healing people up through the stasis. Speaking of stasis, that's one for the Malphite as well. Captain Shrimps tries but fails to survive. That's three dead and all of a sudden a Baron for not Academy team. All right, chat, I don't know what emotes you have, but just throw the dab emote in there because I feel like Tuesday just dabbed on the entirety of C9. That was an Whoa. insane play coming out. I want to see the replay of that. That was flashy as heck. He says, Captain Shrimps, I see what you're doing. I can do it even better. He says, Smack, shut up. I'm playing just fine. That's a Baron going over for non-academy <laughs> team off the back of Tuesday's play. Let's see that one once again. This is disgusting. Tuesday, please forgive oh me for this. God, that was, oh, my goodness. Mine, flash, oh. boom. Oh my god, alright, that's the two-man A-bomb coming out from the Silas, not the Melfight, and the three-man sleep into the ultimate. Just like that, not Academy Team turns the game on its head, they're now in control. Oh! Goodbye, Lucy. And Dokla just skirting around this fight as well with all of these dashes, gets the shield from the locket to... Ah! Oh, that's, that's the guy who picks you up in Mario Kart. <laughs> Correct? I don't know what else to say about that, but holy smokes, Tuesday. That Okay, Tuesday, he's having a rough game. Completely turns it around with that one. That was an absolutely crazy play coming out from the mid laner of Not Academy team. And just like that, they've got Baron. They've got to knock down some turrets. They're going to have this to set up the next dragon as well, which is very important as you do not want to give Eternal Soul over to the 
team of Grave Senna Malphite could be devastating. We're going to have to look. Not Academy team. They need to make these fights fast, right? If they get in a drawn-out team fight against the Senna Braum and these tanks, they're going to get ran down, singled out. They need to pick off the squishy members quickly to make these fights happen, just like what Tuesday did there. Yeah, it's going to be very beneficial for them, especially if that Infernal Soul does end up going over to Cloud9, because if you get into a long fight with the Infernal Soul, you're getting multiple hits of that off from every single champion. You're talking like 15 total hits in a single team fight. So you want those to be quick and you definitely don't want them to have the Infernal Soul because then they just get even more burst to these champions. So you do not want to see that Atomic Bomb. If you are on the side of Not Academy team, they do have the Orn Horn to just secure that they get this turret. Oh, and was dropping the Glacial Fissure has rooted up Tuesday in the stasis. Dead. Now he still has the Call the Forge God. Just not, oh, it's there he is! He gets the knockup onto the back Who's line. Kills Wixie from 100% HP! And everyone else gets wiped off the face of the Earth. Cubby, that's a 5 for 0 ace! That might, that might just be the game. I would love to see the healing on Moonstone Renewer in that fight, as we're going to see Ooh. this one right again. I thought Tuesday was dead here, but the Zanyas buys enough time, and he gets the Kingslayer back again to heal up all the health. I, this is so close coming on through as they are not able to get the bomb passive off to get the stun. That would have killed him right there. The fact that he buys this time, waits it out. There it is. The heal coming on through. He's going to get it once again on the Wixie. Tuesday, man, coming up big on the Silas as they end up taking the game, taking the Nexus and Smex. That was all Cloud9 amateur for the first 25 minutes of the game. And just like that, two fights, game ends in the favor of Not Academy.